Hi, welcome to today's library workshop, Knowing Where to Go, Primary Sources. I can start. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Grace Therrell. I use she, her pronouns, and I am an online learning librarian at UT Libraries. Um, that is my contact information, my email address, if you have questions after today. And hi, my name is Carissa Powell. I use she, her pronouns. I am the Student Success Librarian for Information Literacy. I'm also the liaison to First Year Compositions 101, 102. And my email is carissa at utk.edu. Okay, so here are the things we're going to talk about today, kind of an outline for the next half hour. Um, first, we're going to talk about what a primary source is, kind of define that. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how to incorporate primary sources into your assignment. So we'll do a small activity where we're thinking about when we would use a specific primary source. Third, we're going to look at where to find primary sources. So when you kind of have an idea of what you want to find, we're going to talk about how to find those on the library website. And then finally, we're going to go over some resources and how you can get help with primary source research and then other research after today. And I'm going to turn it over to Carissa to get it started. All right, so what is a primary source? If you are here joining us today for a course, if you wouldn't mind uh, popping into chat what class you're here for. Um, Primary sources are sometimes also used for a synonym for archival research. So some examples of those we'll be going over in the next slide. Um, but essentially, it is a direct record of an event or subject and comparing that to a secondary source, which is more so um, used to analyze, interpret, or synthesize information from something that has already happened. So some, a secondary source is more so something that has happened and been published far after the fact. Uh, this is going to be a little relative, though. There's like a lot of gray matter um, for so many things. Um, for example, a book is generally categorized as a secondary source, um, unless you're talking about how a book was received. So reviews written at the time could then be a primary source. So if that's a little confusing to you, you're in good company. And during this workshop, we'll be trying to go over how to make it less confusing. Um, when in doubt, you are welcome to reach out to your professor. They are really the, um, the person that will be grading your assignment if this is work for an assignment. And so you'll always wanna double check with them. So I wanna share a few examples of primary sources just to get your brain space turning. Um, some examples could be advertisements, blogs, diaries, interview entries, letters, maps, newspaper articles. Um, later on in this session, we'll be looking specifically about how to find a newspaper source, but we have resources to find all of these. A few other potential primary sources could be objects, photos, political cartoons, some types of videos. Again, that's kind of like books. There's some gray matter, um, speeches, tweets, and art. So these are just a few examples. There is always a case to be made for something could or could not be a primary source. Um, we would love to hear from you about which of these you think would be a good primary source to pick. So Amber has put a link in chat to a Padlet. So if you could click there and I will open it up in my other tab. So for this, we have pulled a few examples. Um, we're going to pretend that the epidemic we're researching is HIV AIDS epidemic. We have put some examples of a magazine, a newspaper, an oral history, and a photograph. So we would love to hear from you which one of these you would choose and why. You can click on the photo as a preview of that item. 
the link, depending whether or not you're on campus, you might have to log in with your NetID and password. So take a minute or so, you can write your comment, you can heart or unheart which one you think would be most useful and then comment why. And again, the link to this is in Padlet. seeing some action here. <laughs> it looks like the newspaper is fairly popular. Also look like we have a like for the oral history. Um, so we have a comment, I would choose newspapers as primary sources because I have many details. Yeah, I think newspapers do have a lot of details um, and are very good for like factual information or historical like historical accounts of what happened, um, how things were being reported, those kinds of things, maybe some data. Um, so yeah, anything? So for the sake of the recording, I am going to click on the newspaper so they can see a preview of it. Yeah. Uh, for our viewers watching later on, um, this is just a brief, oh, if it would load, who knows? Okay, here we go. Um, so this is the, this is the Times. Um, this is actually the London Times. So on international. And the art, the part of it was taking AIDS seriously. So this whole thing is not the whole article, but the scan is the whole front page, just as a FYI. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> making it larger. Uh, I'm also seeing some comments for our photograph. Um, could be good depending on what you're looking for. I think that's a great point that not every research topic is going to lend itself to certain primary sources. Um, another person said using voices of people at the time could be very helpful. And again, for the recording, uh, this is the photo we have in question. Yeah, there also seem to be a couple of hearts on the oral history, but no explanation. I'm just curious if anybody who liked it, added a heart, has any, has a little bit of an explanation as to why they would think an oral history. Oh, excellent. Um, is this then remembering the time period? Memory could be distorted by passage of time or urge to reframe things. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah. So, so, oh. <laughs> you go for it, Grace. <laughs> I was actually going to say something about pulling it up. There it is. Um, yeah, so this specific um, oral history could, yeah, it could be someone remembering the time period. Um, and yes, memory could be distorted. When was this published? I am now looking at so, what this show. was published in 1981. Um, which is from the research I was doing, I don't think it's too far. Oh, con interviews conducted in 1993. This is a great question. Um, so the interview was in 1993. And I think they were reflecting on something happening in the early 80s from my, my summation of this. Excellent. Yeah, so I think that's definitely a fair, um, a fair point to bring up is that memory could be distorted. Um, and there could be some things. It also depends on why you're wanting to use that source, right? So if you're wanting something that's really factual or something that seems to be more objective and not as much from a personal viewpoint, you would probably want to go for something more like a magazine or newspaper or just like a more a generally um, more inf information based and in informational resource. Um, but if you're really wanting that personal perspective, if you're wanting to see how people reacted um, and kind of that personal 
aspect, even though this oral history, um, I believe was from someone um, who was involved on the, um, the medical side of things, he's still a person who was involved in what was going on. Um, so as long as you kind of tease out the purpose of why you're wanting to use it, um, and if that personal perspective is really important, then I think this would be a really great resource to use. Something that's really interesting to note is that no one has chosen to use the magazine article. And just for folks here, um, this is Jet Magazine. Um, and it's about, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, it's fear of AIDS causes crisis in blood banks. Um, so I would love to hear from folks here maybe about why they wouldn't choose this one. It's the only, it's the only primary source here that has not been chosen. So I'm intrigued. So you can also comment on this one why you wouldn't choose it. I'm going to open up the full thing so it's a little easier to see. Um, so this is Jet Magazine from 1985. Um, includes a photograph and includes an interview. So Grace, do you have like inklings about why this might not have been chosen? Yeah, I'm trying. Oh, to... here we go. Yeah, there we go. Choose the magazine cover. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, it's another like again photographic resource. Um, I think there's probably I'm trying to think back to like when I've ever done primary source research or have or talked about primary sources when I was um, in school and doing research with those. And I want to say that I think there is sometimes a perception that magazines are like less credible resources or reliable resources than newspapers. Um, and I feel like kind of as, as we've talked about, as we talked about with oral history, um, as someone even mentioned with the photograph, like it like can, can be good and depends on what you're looking for. Same thing with magazine articles. So just because a magazine article is, you know, is what it is or, you know, wherever it was published doesn't mean that it's not a good or credible or reliable resource. So um, I think that can sometimes get lodged into our brains. Maybe what we've been told is a reliable and unreliable resource. Um, and especially with primary sources, a lot of it really depends on the purpose that you're using it for and kind of what you're wanting the source to do in your research. So um, so yeah, using part of the magazine, like the cover, you could even go into the article and I see someone said you could get some good quote, quotes from it, which you definitely could. So um, yeah, primary source research is largely about purpose and how you're going to incorporate it. Anything Sweet. else? Well, yeah, this has been very eye-opening. And again, these are only four types of primary sources. We wanted to, you know, it would take much longer to go through all the other ones we talked about, but um, this is a note that these are not limiting to the types of sources you can use. These were just a few examples of one we wanted to show. So thank you for sharing why, um, why and how you would use some of these. All right. So where would you get started? Um, so we've talked a little bit about what a primary source is. Um, we've talked through like how to use them, why would you, you would use them over another. We have a lot of different primary resources available to you. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use one. And then Grace is gonna leave us with some ways to get help after today. So again, this is only one workshop on primary sources. Uh, we don't expect you to have it all figured out from this one workshop, but we wanna get you started. So if you were to go to 
lib.utk.edu. This is the library's home page. From here, you would go to articles and databases. After you would click on that, Amber's going to pop things in chat because she's amazing. Uh, from there, you would see that we categorize our databases a few different ways. We have some most popular ones. You can also go by subject. Uh, because we're talking about primary sources, I would suggest clicking on primary sources. Um, from there, I wanted to point out that we have about 75 databases for primary sources. And again, these are just ones that we own or subscribe to. Um, you are welcome to look through all 75. There's typically a little blurb about the database to give you some insight about if that relates to your topic, if it has a time period that you're researching. Um, here you can see that American Periodicals is from 740 to 920, 1920. And so if you were researching something from the 1950s, you would not go to this database. I'm going to be showing something from Yale Primary Resources, which is a database I really enjoy. And so if we clicked there, you would get a page that looks like this. Um, there's a few different ways to search. You can um, do a pretty basic search like the one I'm going to do, or you can do an advanced search and just go wild. Um, you can also just browse. And so if you're kind of not really sure what you're looking for, you can look around. But if we typed in HIV AIDS, like we're going to pretend we're still doing that same topic from the Padlet. Um, I wanted to point out that Yale Primary Resources does have several different types of primary resources within it. We've got monographs, manuscripts, newspapers, magazines. Um, some archives from unbound journals, newspapers. So there's a lot of different things going on here. Um, you can also filter by um, publication date, by like document type. Um, so there's a lot of different options here. So I'm gonna pretend that we were looking for that same newspaper article and Looking through here, it would tell us that this was published on Tuesday, November 11th, 1986. Um, it's from the Times in London, and you could look through that way. So those were just a few quick steps about how I found that newspaper article. I do want to leave you that searching for primary sources is very much a trial and error process. Um, there are many times when I'm helping a student or looking for primary sources myself that you have to really like switch out your keywords and synonyms and we have another workshop recording about that. Um, sometimes the thing you're looking for hasn't been digitized yet so maybe the only the physical copy and it's in another country and you can't get to it. Um, maybe the thing you're looking for is in a language and it hasn't been translated to a language you understand and read. Um, so there's a lot of trial and error and uh, it can sometimes feel frustrating, but I want you to know that there's a lot of resources here to help you through some of those setbacks. Um, and if one database isn't working for you, try another one. Again, I just looked at one in 75. And so if you're like, oh, the newspaper database is not doing it for me, I'm going to go try to find a photograph to try to like find other things. But uh, Grace is going to leave us with some things we can do after today to get help. Yeah, so there are so many ways that you can get help with primary source research. Um, we have lots of different options available for you, um, whether you want to talk with a person, whether you want to just kind of dig around on your own. 
Um, and Amber just put a link to all of the links that are listed on that slide. Um, so you can kind of take a look around, see what those are. The first is the primary source research guide, which you can find on the library website. Um, and this is create, this was created uh, primarily for English 102, but has a lot of really good resources for just starting out with primary source research, kind of lists things out by topic. Um, so if there's a topic that you're looking at and you're interested to see where you could find primary sources on those topics, that's a really good place to go. And again, just a good place to start um, if you're starting out any archival or primary source research. Then we also have a tutorial on primary and secondary sources. Um, this tutorial is interactive. It takes, I think, maybe around 10 or 15 minutes to complete. But if you're wanting an interactive learning experience, you're wanting to kind of dig more into the differences between what a primary and secondary source are, when you would use them, that's a really good tool for you. And again, the link for that is in the chat. If you are with us currently, if you are watching this later on, that link is there on the slide for you to type in. And then finally, um, there's a printable guide to primary source research. Um, this kind of just lays out again what a primary source is and also questions to consider as you're starting primary source research um, and just kind of a quick something that you can look at if you need more help or a little bit more guidance. Finally, you can chat with us on the library website um, and that is if you have questions about primary sources, if you started to look for some and you can't find any, if you're just a little bit overwhelmed and you're like, I have no idea where to start, I need help, um, you can chat with us on the library website and there'll be somebody there to be able to help you, walk you through a database if you need help with that, um, trying to figure out what primary sources, like what kinds of primary sources would be good for your research. Um, so again, we do have that option for you. All of these links will be in the description of the YouTube video as well. Thank you, Amber, for letting us know that. Um, so if you are watching this in the future on YouTube, um, you should be able to look in the description box and all of the links for these resources will be there as well. All right, so I think that's all we've got for today. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, Amber's also going to post a link for um, this survey. If you need, I think, an attendance, a record of attendance, um, that should be there. And also that's just a place for you to share your thoughts on our workshop today. Um, we're also having a workshop next week about archival research. And those are gonna be primary sources that you can find within UTK's special collections. So that will be really fun. We'll have somebody from Special Collections who's going to talk, you, talk with you about archival research. So if that's something you're interested in, if you want to learn more about specific primary resources at UT, definitely check out that workshop coming next week. All right. I don't know if Carissa has anything else to add before we wrap up. She says no. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay. <laughs> so thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we are going to stop the recording and enter into a Q&A. So if you have questions about primary sources, you can feel free to let us know those. Um, but yeah, thanks so much.